Well, good morning. This is Chaplain Dan Johnson uh, coming to you from the chapel of Great Lakes Christian Homes and uh, happy to have you join us on this Sunday morning for our uh, next sermon in the series from Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, as I begin this morning, I want to uh, just speak to for a moment about our offering. I mentioned this about, oh, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, that uh, <clears throat> the expenses of all of our churches continue, even uh, though we can't meet together in assembly. And I encourage you to uh, send in your offering, whether it's uh, giving online, uh, if your church has that available, or uh, uh, sending it in by mail, or uh, however uh, uh, you choose to give. Uh, but if you can't, uh, just save it up. And when we're able to return together for uh, our assembly, uh, why just uh, uh, bring the offering at that time. That's what I encourage our residents at uh, Great Lakes Christian Homes to do. Uh, if uh, you want to drop that off at my office, uh, feel free anytime. Uh, but if you want to save that up and then on a Sunday when we can get back together uh, to worship, we'll uh, have a great offering on that day. As a matter of fact, the offering box that we keep in the back of our chapel is being used for other purposes right now. So uh, if you want to drop your offering off, you need to do that at my office. So uh, thank you so much for doing that. And uh, let us begin with a, with a blessing from the word of God. To all who are loved by God and called to be his holy people, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 30. We return today to Hebrews to see the next portrait in the Hall of Faith as we are making our way down this gallery of the faithful heroes from the past. And today we come to uh, verse 30, and even though his name is not mentioned in this verse, we see the likeness of Joshua. Here's what we read. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. Well, I think we get an abbreviated uh, uh, version here of our hero, Joshua, after quite an extended version of his mentor, Moses. Uh, it's as if our author is speeding up and just mentioning the, the highlights of the next few people he wants to get to before he moves on. And so uh, we'll unpack this a little bit and uh, uh, see what the text has here for us as we kind of read between the lines on, on this one. You know, some books have uh, very memorable first lines. Uh, uh, Moby Dick starts with the uh, famous line, Call me Ishmael. Uh, do you know this one? Marley was dead to begin with. Yeah, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. It goes on to say, There was no doubt whatsoever about that. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. That's pretty much how the book of Joshua begins, with God saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 2. There was no doubt whatever about that. The register of God's word says so. God himself conducted the funeral of Moses. He uh, officiated at the burial and spoke the words of the eulogy. Now, Moses had been the central figure of the previous four books of the Bible, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, so much so that they are called the books of Moses, along with the book of Genesis. Moses was dead. Now, what were the people to do? What was Joshua to do? Joshua, you see, had served as Moses' aide de camp, as it were, since he was just a youngster. Well, here's what we read when we turn back in our pages to the book of Joshua, and I'm going to begin uh, reading with verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place you set your foot, as I promised Moses. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you. 
I will never forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and be very courageous. God's promise to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob is about to be realized and Joshua is appointed the leader. The Bible says he was filled with the spirit and the wisdom of Moses because Moses had laid his hands on him as his successor. It's back in Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. Joshua now faces two considerable obstacles in his path. One, the mighty Jordan River at flood stage. The second, the mighty fortified city of Jericho. No wonder God repeats this encouraging word specifically to Joshua at least four times in our text. Be strong and courageous, for I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Joshua 1.9. There are times when we must take care to handle the word of God correctly by not appropriating the words spoken to an individual and applying them to ourselves generally. However, God's word for Joshua is also God's word for us. As we read last week, all these things were written for our instruction. And just to be sure, God promised his, God's promise is reaffirmed to us as Christians in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. Again, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. That is the promise of God who always tells you the truth and will never lie to you. David, Dor David Dorsey points out to me that both obstacles, Jordan and, the Jer and Jericho, are addressed in the same way. In both cases, God gives Joshua strange marching orders. He and the people are expected to step out in faith. In much the same way, we are called to walk by faith and not by sight each and every day. In both cases, the people uh, follow the priests of God carrying the ark of God's presence. If God is with us, asks the Apostle Paul, who can stand against us? In both cases, the formidable obstacle is removed by the miraculous and powerful hand of God. The waters of the Jordan River stand up so the people can pass through into the promised land, while the walls of Jericho fall down flat so the people of God can enter the city. So what are the obstacles that stand in your way today? Where do you need to see the powerful hand of God at work to do the impossible in your life. God instructed Joshua to advance in faith by means that seem strange to us, and he does the same for us. In Revelation chapter 12, we read this of the last day Christians, which of course we are. In Genesis 12 and starting in Verse 10, let me read. And then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Our conflict is not against flesh and blood. The Bible reminds us many times. The battles we fight are in reality spiritual warfare, even if they manifest themselves in material ways. We cannot win a victory apart from God's intervention for the battle belongs to the Lord. George MacDonald observed, you don't have a soul, you are a soul. You have a body. It is often that body, weak and frail and aging as it is, that causes us so much trouble. 
The victory is won by those who do not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. As Christians, we do not disdain the body, for it too is redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and will be raised immortal, imperishable, and incorruptible at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But when we get our eyes off the prize and on to the obstacles, we can be tempted to, to put too much effort, expense, and expectation in prolonging life, which sometimes degenerates into nothing more than prolonging death. As I was working on this sermon, I was at this very point, and uh, a friend whose wife had recently passed stopped in to share with me one of her favorite verses. And uh, we read this, and, uh, and it may be one of your favorite verses too, from the book of Romans, chapter 8, and beginning in verse 38. Uh, a lot of people tell me this is their favorite verse. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. The old song says, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. Actually, it's one of the few battles Joshua didn't fight. Uh, the army marched, the army shouted, and the trumpets blew, but it is God who fought the battle. It's God, not Joshua, who takes center stage in the battle narrative in Joshua chapter 6. The phrase, the ark, the ark, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, appears nine times in ten verses of chapter 6, describing the fall of Jericho. Again, that's our Holy Spirit highlighter when the text repeats itself. We're reminded this is important. In chapter 1 and verse 9, God commanded Joshua to be strong and to be courageous. It says, do not be terrified and do not be discouraged. There are real enemies are revealed. They are unmasked, fear, and discouragement. Again, George MacDonald reminds us that our enemy tries to kill us with fright, for indeed, that is his favorite way of doing things. We are living in fearful times, and we are living in discouraging times. We are facing challenges we have not faced before, and for some of us, it's an inconvenience. For others, these are times of the dark night of the soul. Remember that these times, like all times, are in God's hands. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1, we read, There is a time for everything and a season for every purpose under heaven. How could God say to Joshua, do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. Because here's what the rest of the verse says. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And that's the same promise he makes for you and for me. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. From the first chapter of Joshua, Let's skip all the way to the end of the book of Joshua and hear the resolution of the matter. You know, that's a great thing uh, about the Bible. We can, we can know uh, the end of the story from the beginning, and uh, that gives us hope and confidence. So from, uh, from Joshua chapter 23, I'll read a few verses testimony of Joshua himself. Now I am about to go the way of all the earth. You know with all your heart and soul that not one of all the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed. Not one. 
God always keeps his promises and he will never lie to you. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Let the promise of God sustain you today. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For I will be with you wherever you go. Now let's be encouraged by a benediction from the word of God. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God of peace will be with you all. Amen.